Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. There is a unity to existence, and man must understand this unity if man is to find peace in his life. Islam, Christianity, Judaism are known as monotheistic religions. Monotheism means one God. A number of the other religions are also God-centered, but they have a different way of approaching that unity. It's difficult to comprehend, and maybe impossible in the human form, to comprehend the primal oneness of Allah. The fact that He is all and everything, and that He knows all and he comprehends all, and he is involved in everything. The Quran is very straightforward about the fact that all that goes on is through his will, and that our understandings that we can alter things is a hallucination, an idea without merit. Um, and it gives many examples of uh, people who believe that if they, <clears throat> if their friends had stayed home and not gone uh, into battle, they would have been alive. And it sets forth very clearly it's up to God whether they are alive or not, and whether they stay home or go into conflict. It's up to Allah whether they're alive or not, and their life is subject to the will of Allah, no matter what their circumstances are. It's subject to the will of Allah, and our being is subject to the will of Allah. And all things are subject to the will of Allah. Understanding this parameter, how do we fit in to that? How do we see ourselves in that understanding? Where do we see ourselves in that understanding? And how do we move forward in our existence in that understanding? One, we have to understand that our will is subject to His will. And the way that we can find peace in our own life, serenity in our own life, is to allow our will to meld into His will. In other words, stop being resistant and trying to create your own way when you've already been taught a way. Stop trying to create differences. <coughs> there are people who have various ideas about how to do things and various uh, ideas about what's right and what's wrong. And then you have doctrine, holy words, divine scriptures, in all of the religions which set forth correct action. Now, there may be, if you want to look for them, 
uh, it may be possible to find discrepancies between the different doctrines. But it has to be remembered that Allah gave the Torah, Allah gave the Gospel, and Allah gave the Quran. And if you think there are differences, it's you that have created the differences, not Allah. The Quran says in, uh, I think it's in Imran, very clearly that there is a unity in all these books. And if man were of good will, and if man recognized God's constant intervention within the life of man, he would see this unity. And he would see that there are no differences. And man would be able to live with his brothers, all of the book, in a state of peace and unity. But it is the need that man seems to have to find differences that causes conflict. It's man's need to differentiate and to nitpick and to try and show that this is different than that and this is different than that that causes the problems. But in truth, there are no differences. And in truth, there is unity. The only problem is man's refusal to abide in unity. It seems man has this need to differentiate, to make himself somehow different, or to think that he can escape from God's will by certain thing, by doing certain things, or that God's will doesn't have an absolute control over him at the end of things. Well, we should know, and we should be very cognizant of, the fact that all life on this earth was created by Allah. And in the same way that he created us, he also takes us back, and takes us back with him. And that this period of existence, when we are blinded to a lot of reality, will end. And that blindness will become light, and we will see. And in those moments of sight, we will either have remorse or we will be in the midst of plentitude, depending on how we lived our life. When we see the truth and we have denied the truth and that radiance of the truth shines in our face and overwhelms us, we will either be in bliss or in shame in shame if we have denied it, in bliss if we have been with it. So, we know that this moment is going to come. And we know the light will be revealed to us. What happens is, we keep forgetting. We get caught up in the everyday, mundane, worldly, traps that are set for us. We get caught up in our businesses. We get caught up in our money situations. We get caught up in our interpersonal relationship situations. And all of these grow into some sort of monumental uh, situations for us as if they had great import. Um, it's almost uh, like watching a soap opera and being so involved in the details of the soap opera, which, by the way, for the, those of you who have watched soap operas, never end. 
because the plots are written in such a way that they maintain the show. They can't end it because then the show would go off. <clears throat> well, we have this show. And in order to keep it exciting, we constantly create drama. Now, how do we escape from the drama? How do we escape from the importance of this elemental existence? How do we escape from our attachment to this elemental existence? In order to do that, we have to have the concept strong within us that all of this is going to disappear and all of this is going to end and it's just not going to matter. Well, if it's not going to matter, then why does it matter? And if it's not important, then why is it important? We have to put ourselves in a point where we actually question our relationship with the world and why the relationship with the world is the way it is. And what is it within us that fuels making this world important and forgetting, ignoring, and bypassing the truth of the unity of Allah in all of existence. Why do we need duality in our life? To create conflict, to create problems that we can solve, to show the brilliance of our mind. If you go to a bad lawyer, the first thing he does is he makes your situation much more complicated than it really is. And the reason he does that is so he can charge you more money and explain to you how brilliant he is that he's working this out for you. Well, our mind is really a separate entity from us. And it's like a bad lawyer. It wants to show you its brilliance by resolving these situations for you. But if it had no business, then what would it do? <laughs> it's like the story of there was one lawyer in a city and he couldn't make any money. A second lawyer moved into the city and they both became rich. And that's because they could create conflict. And then there'd be somebody to contest that conflict and on and on and on. Well, we talk about peace. We talk about wanting peace. We talk about looking for peace. We talk about finding serenity and contentment and calmness. Yet, we are so subject to the distractions that cause duality. We are so subject to all of the things that make us need to resolve situations. All situations are resolved. What's not resolved is our inner conflict. If we could resolve our inner conflict, then there would be no outer conflict because that outer conflict couldn't touch us. But if we have inner conflict, every outer conflict becomes something that we're attuned to. So we set our own program. It's like tuning into a radio station. If we are tuned to conflict, we're going to find conflict. If we are tuned to peace, we can find peace. Now, as we go along our inner dial, we have to find the area where peace is, between 92 and 92.5. Tune in, tune in to that area and stay there. There's no need to view the rest of the dial. There's unity and there's conflict. Now, what's interesting is it takes time to find the depth of unity. It takes time to understand the overwhelming nature of unity and the all-inclusive nature of unity. And this doesn't come to you in a moment, but conflict is immediately understandable and available. And it's constantly there for you. And if you're looking to get into a fight, there's a million places 
to get into a fight and a million things to fight about. We can fight about politics, we can fight about religions, we can fight about international relations, we can fight about immigration, we can fight, we can fight about economic policy, we can fight about which of us should decide who should go to what movie. We can fight about anything. And what I found, and it's really interesting, different people have different filters. Some have no filters at all. So to some people, the smallest matter, the tiniest insignificant apparent difference is the same as a world war because they don't know any other way to react. They don't, they don't react on a scale. They react full tilt to everything. We need to learn how not to react. And it's a very difficult thing to learn. It's a very difficult thing to appreciate because we are all taught to defend ourselves to stand up for ourselves, to not allow ourselves to be degraded. And we're taught that when these kinds of things happen, we have to make some kind of show that we aren't accepting it. We can't be bullied. We can't allow ourselves to be bullied. But how are we able to react to these kinds of situations in a non-conflictory manner? How are we able to explain the solidity of our position, the integrity of our being, and yet at the same time not be involved in conflict? This is subtle, and it takes a master to be able to explain this. And once we learn it, we then have to be able to incorporate it in our lives. And it's simple enough that if words are thrown at us, we have to be clever in how to react to those words without causing a fire. We have to have a way that we can modify, mollify, and redirect difficulty and make it into peace. This is a great, enormous skill. And we have, in different situations, people who are very adept in this skill. Um, hostage negotiators, diplomats, people who somehow can take incendiary situations and relax them. Take incendiary situations and put the fire out of them take the heat out of them. We have to become those people and we have to know how to do it. And it also means that if we're not competent yet to do it, we shouldn't step into it. Because when we're not competent, the old ways of reaction will take over and immediately people will beat each other's throats. How is it that we can remove ourselves from that kind of activity? How is it that we can bring ourselves into that state of peace? And again, it returns to understanding that Allah is one and all is in Allah's hands and we need to allow that to be the fulcrum of our life. So, if we are following Allah's way, and our life is in His hands, and we make every effort in an appropriate way to do the appropriate thing, then we've done all that we can do. And we need to be satisfied with that. Some of the things that cause difficulty for us is the creating of expectations, the attachment to those expectations, and 
what happens when those expectations don't go the way we think they should go. So what we've done is we have created a hallucinatory future projection and we expect it to come out that way, yet we can't tell the future. We don't know what's going to happen. So what we should do is back off from the future, back away from the past, and live in this moment. If we can watch this moment and be in this moment, then the trajectory of this moment is not what we are involved in. We're involved with the moment. But the mind isn't that calm. It isn't able to stay within the moment. It is constantly within the, pro the trajectory of this moment. So here we are, but we're not thinking about now. We're thinking about where we're going. We're thinking about where we're going to be. We're thinking about what's going to happen. Yet we need to be involved in the moment. And there are people and situations that are so strong and so powerful that when you're with them, you're now. And you're focused and you're centered. And the future is not within your thought parameter because it's not important. What's going on now is so right that there's nowhere else to be. This happened when I was with my teacher. When I would walk into the room, there was nowhere else to be. I was already there. There was nowhere better to be because I was in the best place one could be which put me in the center of the universe. Now, you are always in the center of the universe. The problem is you don't recognize what the center of the universe looks like. Why? Because you can't see it with your eyes. You can't see it with the things that you look at in the elemental world. The elemental world is not the center of the universe. So you're looking for the center of the universe in places where it can't be found. You can travel around the world. You can go to every place in the world and you won't find it. It's like this never-ending journey and a never-ending quest, quest because you don't have a map. You need a guide. And that guide tells you first, sit still. You don't have to go anywhere. It's all inside of you. And if you can't find it inside of you, you can't find it. If you can't find contentment inside of you, you're not going to find contentment outside of you. If you can't find peace inside of you, you're not going to find peace outside of you. If you can't sit still and be content, you can't travel and be content. Moving doesn't change your circumstances. Different environments don't change your real circumstances. They just change your external habitat. And if you are subject to externalities, then it's certainly going to feel like something changed. But that's because you get all of your feeling from what's outside of you and you don't get it from inside of you. So, we need to spend time inside of ourselves. We have to create a space inside of ourselves where we communicate with reality, where we communicate with truth. When we pass from these worlds, these eyes, these physical eyes that see the physical world are no longer going to be working. These ears that interact with the physical sounds in this creation are no longer going to be working. This tongue that tastes 
the physical tastes of this world are no longer going to be working. So we should ask ourselves, what is it that's going to be working? What is it that's going to have a relationship with whatever there is after we passed? What does our soul talk to? What does our soul integrate with? What does our soul see? And how does it see? We have to understand that we're going to have to learn an entirely new way of being and interacting in a universe, in a sphere, in a plane that's not at all like this. So we have to spend a lot of time sitting still with our eyes closed and imagining the reality of mercy. We have to spend a lot of time sitting still with our eyes closed and imagining the reality of what is love. What is that vibration? And do we understand <clears throat> that we are vibratory beings and there will become a time when we will communicate through vibration? There will come a time when we will communicate in a non-physical form and we have to become prepared for that. And if all of our attention and all of, all of our attachment and all of our love is devoted to physical form, when we move into a non-physical form, we will be absolutely lost. We will be without a place to be grounded. We will be without any support system. But if we can take ourselves into the vibratory nature of the resonance of the qualities of Allah and those become our reality and we understand that everything runs on the reality of those resonances then when this goes we haven't left we've just entered into our truth and we now become aware of our truth and we become aware of the reality of ourselves and we can travel there while we're here but to do it we have to die to the influence of the elemental world and this means dying to the influence of religious differences dying to the to the to the racial differences, dying to language differences, dying to cultural differences, dying to all the things that keep the elemental world in its place and keep us trapped within it. And if we can die to all of these, we can be born into reality. And we should be practicing doing this on a daily basis. The world is not real. Only God's qualities are real. May God's qualities open up within me so that the resonance of those qualities, the vibration of those qualities, the reality of those qualities enters into my being through every pore within me. And through that, all of the attachments to this elemental world disappear from me. All of the attachments to that which is not real disappears from me. And we know that God alone is and the unity of God is throughout everything. And we are within that unity. May it be so for each of us. Amin. Amin. Ya Rabbil Alameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.